Well, many of us are sort of used to the way things work here in the state of Utah. Our state is broken up into wards and stakes, and it feels completely natural to be a part of these congregations. But what's it like to live here if you're not a member of the LDS Church? Author Chrissy Ross shares her experience moving to Utah with her family and learning about our culture. Utah is beautiful, and we love living here. My name is Chrissy Ross, and my husband and I moved to Utah 10 years ago with our two sons. So, do you have guitar? Yeah. We've been practicing. We were excited about our new home and our new neighborhood that was slowly filling in, and we knew that it was a predominantly Mormon state and, and predominantly Mormon town and county, but we didn't know it was as Mormon as it turned out to be. After about six months, odd paranoia set in. I felt like I was simply a missionary opportunity. I questioned everybody's um, attempt at friendship. As my kind of aggression and irritation at all things Mormon was growing, I would drive home from school with my kids and count steeples, be like 27, 28, 29, 30, like how many, good heavens, they're multiplying like rabbits. And I looked for uh, garment lines when I would go to the grocery store. And it was just a reminder of the predominant religion that I was not. If someone rang my doorbell and I was enjoying a glass of wine, I felt like I had to hide the wine, you know, <laughs> banaka, fluff my hair. I didn't want them to not let their kids come and play with our kids. I worried about my kids being accepted or included, so I called my mother and I was very sad. Mom, I, I'm done. I don't think I can stay here anymore. I just feel lonely and I think I'm getting depressed. And it was like a, a booming voice said, lighten up, Francis. And, and so I did. And I really began to embrace my neighbors and neighborhood and community. So I wrote uh, a book and it, the title is To Mormons With Love, A Little Something from the New Girl in Utah. It's just some self-deprecating humor that answers the questions, how did you end up here? I believe that the member-non-member -member divide still exists. It's not as big as it used to be or as wide, and I'm passionate about fair-mindedness and bridging divides. I may not be leading the way with the big flag, you know, in the parade, but, but I think it's a very important thing to do. It's a Well, bridging that member-non-member -member divide can be a tricky thing, but if done well, it can enrich neighborhoods and improve communities. Chrissy Ross joins me now to talk about why it's so important that we try to be more inclusive of all people. It's huge. And do you think that here in Utah that there is kind of this us versus them mentality really in neighborhoods with this member-non-member -member thing? I don't think it's us v them. I don't think it's a versus, or I, I don't like to think that it is, but I do think social segregation occurs um, because of a lot of the social activities being rooted in the church right. for members of the LDS church. But I don't think it's a versus, but, but, but it, it can happen where there's people kind of go with their own, their own people, so to speak. Where you're comfortable, maybe, yeah, and sure. where you have a lot in common. Um, what lessons would you say that since moving here to Utah that you've learned? What have you come away with? Um, I've learned not to believe everything that I hear. Mm -hmm. In my book, I talk about the, the non member grapevine is alive and well. When we first moved here 10 and a half years ago, I heard all kinds of things that were not true. And I also learned when I would ask um, sometimes my LDS friends a question, I could ask five different people the same question and get a different answer whether it was about doctrine or just cultural issues and that's when I began going to LDS org and that's when I read the book I just really wanted to understand for myself right. and where and people were coming from yes so what about multiple chances both as LDS and non LDS members definitely I think when you're um, trying to make a friend you know create a new relationship particularly in Utah where there is a culture that's almost um, it's almost taken on a religion of its own because there's nothing in the doctrine that 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 defines this this culture that exists right. in pockets of, of Utah. Um, that yeah, I think you need to give people multiple chances. I, I use the analogy of going in for a kiss. If you bump noses, what a shame if you didn't tilt your head a different way and try again because there's a payoff and be patient with yourself and with other people. And did you ask questions when you didn't understand, like the jargon or the, the names of things? I did. Yeah. I, that's part of my personality, but I encourage others to do that on both sides. Even I appreciated it when my LDS friends would ask me questions. Well, tell me about your background right. or um, 
even if they asked about my faith, which um, some people consider that personal, I, I felt like they were asking because they wanted to get to know me, not because they were getting information for their, do you know what right, I mean? Right, right. And there are lots of commonalities. We have yes. lots of common, just because maybe we're not all the same religion. Yeah. Okay, so what about, um, what advice would you give LDS church members? Uh, so that they're not seeing maybe everybody as a missionary opportunity or making you feel like you are one, that you can do things together and, and not have to worry about that maybe that's on their mind. Communicate precisely that. And there, there's gentle ways to do that. If you're nourishing virtues, kindness, the overarching virtue, I was right. talking with a friend recently, being love, that's why it's tomorrow's with love, um, reaching out to another human being to ask them, invite them to do something with you, and, and you're really not rooted in a missionary opportunity, people feel that. And, right. and again, communicate that. Hey, just so that you know, we're inviting you. Right. As a friend. As a friend. You yeah. might be interested. We're going mountain bike riding with this group in our church that come with us. Yes. And so what about ward activities? I know in our neighborhood, we call them neighborhood activities. And that's a helpful thing. And include thing. everybody. Yeah. I think that's that's helpful. Anytime you can use language that is all encompassing. Inclusive. Um, it, it, yes. Yeah. Very inclusive. Um, instead of saying it's a priesthood activity, it's just an activity. We're going right. sledding. It's not a mutual, you know, I right. think that makes people feel more, more comfortable who aren't familiar with the religious vernacular specific to Mormonism. Thanks so much for being here with oh, us. Thank you. Appreciate your insight. Coming up